that's going to exacerbation. This is a paper we wrote, me and Hamdan. And we showed that exacerbation of severe exacerbation, it's 2.7 severe exacerbation per year. Look at the bottom of the table there. More than three exacerbation per year was 23% of all asthmatics. Isn't this a big number? This is a huge number. And we have this stigmatized in Saudi. This is a paper that we wrote and published last month in CHEST. This is our diagram. Look at the left-hand side there. Saudi Arabia has the highest severe exacerbation among all countries. Yes, after adjustment for other factors, it went down, but still high. Because if you look at this number from a Saudi perspective, we have 0.98 severe exacerbation per year. Almost the same level as UK. But look at Denmark, it's only 0.03 exa severe exacerbation per year. We are the highest severe exacerbation. When they asked me, well, the reviewer asked me, why Saudi Arabia has this high number of exacerbation? This is in the manuscript. We do have environmental issues, lots of sandstorm, big, large area, but really we cannot convince that this is the only issue. So there is a problem with severe exacerbation, Saudi Arabia. So, so, so far, I said exacerbation, asthma attack. Exacerbation. Is, is that a big issue? It's only an exacerbation. But this is a painting that's drawn by one of the artists and was in an award in the New Zealand Asthma Forum. This is exactly how patients feel when they have an asthma attack. It's like breathing underwater. So if we are at the global level, the highest number, this is how our patients feel every time they go to the emergency department, got admitted, get steroids, etc. It's the agony of breathing. So do we have challenges? Of course we do. So if you look at challenges, one of them is diagnosis. So to diagnose, we need spirometry. We talk about spirometry all the time. Do we actually need spirometry? We have enough spirometries. No, we don't. If you look at PFT labs, we only have 0 0.06 PFT lab per 100,000 Saudis. Compare that to the US, they have 2.1. PFT lab per 100,000, where they are, we are at a hundredfold decrease compared to the US. Fino is virtually unavailable in Saudi. Then the issue of referrals. So connecting, as Dr. Weil talked about, is a connecting primary health care to secondary hospital, secondary hospital to tertiary hospitals. Do we do have issues with this? And we only this is a good practice point. Once you have a severe asthma, please refer them to tertiary centers. And there are criteria to send those patients to us. Whether they have two exacerbations or more, being on oral corticosteroid daily, visiting emergency department two years, two, twice per year, or using Ventolin, or the three canisters per year, which is gonna be very important in the next part of my slides. So in terms of treatment, so this is the Ventolin one. We, are, we were part of Sabina. Sabina was a program looking into Saba, Ventolin. Started in the UK, Sabina one, then UK, Europe, and US, then come us, Sabina three. So we were part of Sabina three across the region. Saudi was presented in 500 people. Look at this. This is where things got a bit muddy. About half of our patients uses three canisters of Ventolin per year. That's in Africa and Middle East. Compare those to Asia, 27%. Latin America is only 40%. By far, really high numbers. Let's go deep and zoom in into Saudi. This is a paper Prof. Hamdan and myself wrote. Look into the Saudi numbers. So let's talk Saudi numbers. Again, showed again the same thing. Exacerbation is high, 2.7 exacerbation per year. 
Actually, 62% of our population had one or more excess, severe exacerbation. 64% of us have partially controlled asthma. Again, the same thing that Hamdan talked about early on. 95% were on medium to high dose inhaled corticosteroid, and 45% were on short courses of steroids. About 50% are on steroids, orally, oral. We still have people still using Ventolin alone, 13% alone. That's in mild asthma. But let's, let's go deep into the thing that we're looking at, really. What's the average canisters used by Saudis? 11, on average, per year. So I'm almost a canister per month. Let's go back. More than 13 canisters is being used by 34%, what a third of our population. And if you look at the paragraph, actually more than 13 is 25%. It's huge numbers. So in here, 60% of population, Saudi population, use more than three canisters. 60%, and about 40% use more than 10 canisters per year. Isn't this a big number? It is, because I will show you why is it an important number. 20% of our population actually purchase Sabas from pharmacy on top of their prescribed Ventolin. And 66% purchase more than three canisters, aside from the one prescribed to them. In fact, if you look at two people who use Ventolin alone, 28% had more than three canisters, three exacerbations. Use who, people who use medium to high dose inhaled corticosteroid, 63% has more than one uh, severe exacerbation. And even people who use oral corticosteroid had 79% of them have severe exacerbation. Let's compare ourselves to the others. Globally, 51% only uses three canisters or more. The Gulf, 71%, we're at 60%, definitely higher than global. In terms of severe exacerbation, globally, 46% have one or more exacerbation, severe exacerbation. Gulf, 49, us, 62. Partially controlled, global, 24%. Uncontrolled, 22% in Gulf, 37% us. So what did I get so far? One, more severe exacerbation, i.e. more emergency visit, short course of steroid hospitalization, more uncontrolled asthma, and we still use Ventolin. How is that important? Because if you use more Ventolin, there is a higher chance of exacerbation. If you use more Ventolin, you have a higher chance of uncontrolled asthma. That's not important. This is important. It's associated with mortality. If you use more than three canisters per year, the chance of mortality in your patient is higher. Let's put it in more numbers. Overall mortality, if you have three canisters or more, the chance of mortality is about 26%. If you use between six and 10 canisters, the chance of mortality is about 66%. If it's more than 10 canisters, that's a chance of two and a half fold increase. Let me remind you of our numbers. 60% of our people uses more than three canisters per year. 41% use more than 10 canisters per year. Two and a half fold increase in mortality. Those are huge numbers, both in overall mortality and asthma mortality. Why? Because if you use pheno, which is a, a biomarker to measure inflammation of the airways, of the lungs, Ventolin actually increases pheno and inflammation from 62 to 81. Inhaled corticosteroid does the other way around. So we should be pushing more for inhaled corticosteroid use, not Ventolin alone. So that's one in terms of treatment. Inhalers, how about compliance? Our compliance compared to the others is only 40% compliant, 60% non-compliant. Abu Omar, the third Abu Omar here in this room, 
talks about inflammatory cascade and the effect of biological therapy. We have plenty. IgE, omalizumab, the mepolizumab and benralizumab, interleukin 5s, which target different targets, and then dupilimab. The new kid in the block, as Dr. Uh, Zaytuni said, TSLP, which worked higher. The guys talked about this a bit earlier. We have omalizumab, which worked on the allergic asthma. Mepolizumab, mostly on the eosinophilic asthma. Benralizumab on the eosinophilic asthma. And lastly, dupilimab on really both, but mostly on eosinophilic asthma. The new, new kid is a kid in the block, tizapilimab, which really works on everything, regardless of what the biomarkers. It's for severe, uncontrolled asthma. We did look into the ISR. We published this in Allergy uh, Journal and looked into the global variability in terms of administrative biologics. And in Saudi, we're OK. It's there. It's available. We can work it. We can do things around. So it's there. It's safe. We did this on the effect of mepolizumab and reduction of exacerbation. Let's zoom in. zoom in here. On average, people come to the emergency department 18 times per hour per year. On mepolizumab, or really with any biological therapy, it was dropped by 90%. Short course of steroid dropped by 81%. Or when we started biological therapy, 46% of our people were on oral steroid daily. This was reduced to only 20% with one year of biological therapy. I don't remember the last time I prescribed daily steroids for my patients because we do have biologic and we can switch between them. So that's a good thing. We are in an era of biological therapy that changed lives. In fact, now we talk about things like remission. Remission, meaning that we start a therapy and after one year on this therapy, people, these patients will be normal. They have no symptoms, no exacerbation, no ER visit, etc. This is a paper done by Dr. Zaytouni when they looked into omalizumab and if they started in the proper way. And they said only 56% of people on omalizumab started properly. It's the other way around, about then 60% of people were not started properly on omalizumab. And omalizumab has been there for years, and its effect is not the greatest. We did this paper published in Allergy, where we compared the effect, real-world evidence, compared mepolizumab and benralizumab versus omalizumab. And you can see here, the drop in mepolizumab and benralizumab was significantly higher than omalizumab. 47% reduction in exacerbation compared to 38%. Hospital admission was reduced 71% in the mepolizumab benralizumab arm versus 57% in omalizumab. Emergency visit was dropped significantly in both, 81%, but also the length, uh, uh, the oral corticosteroid used was dropped significantly in mepolizumab and ralizumab. Why? Because we know this for a fact, for years now. Omalizumab does not work on everyone. It only works on 30 to 50% of all people. And the switch from one biologic to another always have an effect. So oh, it's always great, as Dr. Zaytouni mentioned in his answer to that question, it's always great to have all biological in because we have the availability to switch from one to the other. This is my last slide. Hopefully by now, I convinced you that the burden of severe asthma is huge in Saudi, even compared to the global level, that there are challenges, especially with the diagnosis and the lack of specialized centers and experts. And although medications are available, but we do have poor compliance and education. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Riyadh, for this brilliant presentation. And really, I enjoy it. And uh, since I was 
graduated as a pulmonary consultant in 2017, I was talking about the importance of concentration on the asthma and COPD. Unfortunately, we have a brilliant uh, program for a diabetic patients, but unfortunately, we don't have for the asthma and COPD. And I want to mention that a lot of sad story that we have among the asthma patients. One day I, I was having a patient, he came with, uh, it looks like that he's uh, in a wheelchair. And I talked with him, what has happened? He's at 33. And he said, I have a vascular necrosis and I replaced the, the, the two hip joints because I told him why. He said that he was taking a steroid to control his asthma. Whenever he is uh, having a symptoms, he starts to take steroids without inhalers, without uh, even the saba. He doesn't take it. And he developed this uh, very bad avascular necrosis bilateral. He is engineering, 33 years. Uh, imagine the, the, the economic burden to, to, uh, to manage a such yeah. patient. Yes. So I think we have to encourage the... Uh, asthma program, awareness, and education for the healthcare providers. Please, when you are suspecting this patient as uh, uncontrolled asthma, and you are not able to, to manage or, or deal with a such patient, refer him to, to uh, a healthcare facility that is able to, to deal with a such patient. Thank you, Dr. Ria. I totally agree with this. When I receive patients in the severe asthma clinic, I ask them, how many times did you go to the emergency department in the last year? How many times you used short course steroids? I said, last year was the best year. There's the new patient. I only went to the emergency department once a month. So what's that? That's 12 month times a year. By any definition, this is a severe asthma uncontrolled. Just FYI, two excessive patients in the past year is the definition of severe asthma. Our patients are happy with it only once a month. Some of them goes every week. So that's why also we have those high numbers. I agree with you. Quite eye opener, thanks a lot for this data, sharing the data. Now, in addition to the, uh, your answer to the journal, what do you think is really behind uh, our numbers and any suggestions how we can start fixing it? Yeah, so, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's multifactorial. Patients feel, so they don't go to GP. They don't go to the primary health care. And the, what they get all of their treatment is from the emergency department. So they go to the emergency, the emergency doctor gives them Ventolin, and they go. And they'll come back in next week. That's better for them. And they get, in, they get nebulized therapy. That was why the numbers are high. So that's one. By far, w among all the industrial countries, we have the lowest access to a severe asthma clinic, to a program, and hence biological therapy. And, and I'll be honest because I have those meetings with the ISAR group. They have 40% on biologic. We are just low. That's true. Then the environmental factor. We cannot take it out. Al-Farq Bainana, Uban Al-Gulf. Gulf is only the coastal, the based on this. But we have, in Riyadh, has sandstorms. We have altitude issues. So we have multiple issues with it. Pollution. Pollutions, it's there. So um, I do think it's multifactorial, and hopefully with the MOH, we can work together in working with this. Uh, Riyadh, I always enjoy your lectures, honestly. Uh, it's crisp, clear, message is very clear. Um, and being in practice, I think we always have to go to the basics. Um, uh, and biologic definitely make a big difference in management for us uh, as a pulmonologist who see severe patients uh, uh, and those who they are, we are sure that they are taking the right treatment, the proper way of inhaler, inhalations, to receive educations. Uh, and um, I think we need to invest more in the infrastructures uh, at the level of primary care and, primary yes. and uh, family medicine, community clinics where they have all the resources to teach the patients how to use inhaler proper. Yes. Well, inhaler's device is still problematic for many years. The, the inventions in 
developing new devices that make it easy uh, still behind. Yep. But I think if we invest also in the educations uh, and also uh, in preventions and educations and additions, probably we need less uh, need for biologic. these biologics. Especially biologics, if you think about uh, using biologic for a lot of patients, it's going to be a lot of cost That's true. At, at the cost of other, uh, other disease. So I think uh, stressing, especially this is organized by Ministry of Health, I think, I think this is opportunity to voice our concern that we need an infrastructure in primary care and community medicine to be more um, ready to manage these kind of patients before they come to us severe with all these complications. Although my presentation on severe asthma, biologic only last three or four slides, the majority was it was inhaler and focus on inhaler therapy. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Riyab, for this informative uh, presentation. Uh, I wish uh, my presentation after you, because most of the items I showed in the assessment form, Dr. Uh, Riyab presented well uh, in scientific background and show uh, the, um, what uh, the burden of uh, SABA alone treatment, uh, as an example, uh, I think three or four of uh, the, what Dr. Riyad presented is addressed in the assessment form. Patient on inhaled corticosteroid, yes or no? This is uh, also uh, integrated in the health system. Uh, SAB alone treatment, how many canister uh, barrier was taken by the patient? Also in the assessment form in three and 12 categories. Uh, I think this is also uh, address uh, Prof. Hamdan uh, concern about uh, primary health care. Uh, it's not just about health education. Now we step up uh, the management in the BHC to be standardized. So all these uh, items will be under uh, monitoring and evaluation, inshallah, in the next phase. So all for Dr. Riyadh. Now this is assessment form include all the necessary, inshallah, uh, assessment aspect. What the next, now we will uh, pull this data and monitor this KBI. What's the best advice uh, to take from you? This is uh, a very, <laughs> so it's a very complicated question. I think Hajar is working around just for me to move on, but um, I will answer it this way. I do have a project in cluster two, which can, we can work together in this. I actually put a criteria for patients to stay in primary health care, move on to secondary hospitals, and then to the severe asthma program. There's a very specific criteria to it. For example, patient on daily oral corticosteroid, maybe they shouldn't be in primary health care, just go to the severe asthma, tertiary, not secondary. So I do have a criteria. I'm gonna launch it, inshallah, after Ramadan, and I can be involved. Yeah. I'm more happy to be uh, next to you.